Good morning and welcome as we gather on this, the fourth Sunday after Pentecost, as we continue to journey with Christ. Uh, last week, uh, thought about being sent out, often facing opposition, uh, but the call to go forth with the gift and promise of the gospel. Uh, and in this week, we begin to think about the hospitality, the welcome that is offered to those who are out there, those who are sharing that word. And so in the same way, uh, thinking about how we, as a congregation, as a people of God, welcome people into our church, into our communities, into our lives. And so certainly as we worship now in person on Sunday morning, but also many of you who are watching now uh, participate through the online worship, uh, we will continue both of those uh, opportunities to be a part of worship, opportunities to share in this time of worship and praise as we give thanks to God. And so we invite all who gather uh, at home, those who will gather in person as we share together in this time of worship. Uh, before beginning, just again, a request for your prayers. Uh, Arlene Carlson passed away unexpectedly this last week, uh, the wife of Mick Carlson, and her funeral service will be this coming Tuesday at the funeral home. And so we continue to lift up her family in our prayers this day. Uh, but again, welcome as we gather for worship and we begin with our opening hymn. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sins. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. 
We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you direct our lives by your grace, and your words of justice and mercy reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Jeremiah, the 28th chapter. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah, in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We will now read Psalm 89 responsively. Your love, O God, forever will I sing. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your steadfast love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. Happy are the people who know the festal shout. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your presence. They rejoice daily in your name. They are jubilant in your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength, and by your favor our might is exalted. Truly our shield belongs to the Lord, our King to the Holy One. The second reading is taken from the book of Romans, the sixth chapter. Do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, 
have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in hu human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wage, wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. As we begin this morning, I'd like to ask everyone to think back to some memory when you were shown great hospitality. So was it a time maybe you visited your grandma? Was it maybe a host on some journey that you were on? And how were you received? And what was it that they did that made you feel so accepted, so good? Those are the things that keep us remembering those events. So as you think about those memories, I'm not going to ask you to tell that story, but I do want to share one of my own. Last year, when I went back to Papua New Guinea, where I was born, where I grew up, I had been away for 40 years. My brother, my older brother, and I, we flew into Medang, the town where we lived. And the very next day, they took us out to this village, the place where I lived when I was born and spent my first seven years of life. The village was Bongu, was the name. Back when we lived there, the only way to get there was by boat for perhaps three hours. Or you could fly, there was a small airstrip, it was about an 11-minute flight from town. But now they have a road, well, it's sort of a road, it's very bumpy, it's very rough. And there's at least a bridge over the biggest of the rivers, but there are at least five rivers that we had to drive through on the way there. Now, as we drove out, a number of villages along the way, it was amazing. There were kids there lined up to celebrate and to welcome our coming. What made it really amazing was we were probably two to three hours later than what we had said we would be. And yet the kids and villagers were still there waiting. In fact, we saw a number of people that we knew from when we were kids. But then finally arriving 21 miles down the coast to the village of Bongu, we got out of our car, and I imagine the entire village was there, lots of kids, all excited, watching us. They had us walk through this grass doorway, and on the other side, there were singers dressed in some traditional outfits. And they were playing their local drums, and they were singing as we walked down the path, as we headed up the road to where our house was. 
We arrived. They had a makeshift shelter built out there in the yard to protect us from the sun. And so we sat there and we visited. We introduced one another. And then they served us some food, some fresh tropical fruit. And then we had time to walk through the house where we grew up. Finally, we walked down a quarter of a mile to the, to the beach where we swam every day. And then into the village right along that ocean. Once in the village, we sat down and they brought a meal. But it wasn't a meal for everyone to eat. It was there for my brother and for myself. And as I prepared to take the lid off the food, I was kind of hesitant because in my mind I remembered how they would often serve food. They'd have potatoes and they had some meat. They didn't eat a lot of meat. But usually it was the whole animal. It wasn't just slices of meat. You'd open the lid and you'd see this face looking at you. And so I hesitated, but I took off the lid. There were, there were potatoes, different kinds, yams, cow cow, different things that they grew that we remembered. And then there were fish. And it wasn't just the filet of fish, which I would typically eat. It was the entire fish, the head, the eyes, the tail. And I kind of looked at my brother and I said, you know, I'm just going to eat the potatoes. I think I'm going to leave the fish be. He took some fish and I kind of passed it on. But when, then one of the villagers looked at me and he said, you know, we were thinking about you when you were a kid and when you lived here. And we remember how much you loved going fishing, so we assumed that you would want the fish to eat. And after that, I reached out and I took the fish and I ate it and I loved it. Hospitality. Welcome. It wasn't just the meal that they provided. But it was the memories. It was all the thought that went into it. It was a, a great day. Of course, you know, it would be easy to, to sit there and think, wow, this is all about us. They're honoring us. And in a way, they were. But it really has nothing to do with us. It has to do with God. Our gospel today about hospitality, about what? In fact, in just the first few verses, the word welcome is used six different times. Jesus said to the twelve, whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. You see, it's not about us. God sent Jesus, but then Jesus sends us. We kind of looked at that last week in our gospel. Tough reading. The challenge of carrying out God's work. And sometimes it means that we don't always get along with other family members. There's conflict. But yet the focus is not on us. It's on God. It's on the mission that we are called to carry out God's name. And so just as God sends Jesus, Jesus then sends us. So it's not about us but it goes back to Jesus and ultimately to God. The welcome that we offer, not because of who we are or who we're offering to, but we do it in response to Christ's name. And to realize what we do, what we say, can sometimes have the greatest effect on people. I came across a story this last week that I wanted to share this morning. The author writes it in this way. He starts off, he says, I saw him in the church building for the first time on Wednesday. He was in his mid-70s with thinning silver hair and, and a neat brown suit. Many times in the past, I had invited him to come. Several other Christian friends had talked to him about the Lord and had tried to share the good news with him. He 
He was well-respected, honest, a man of good character. He acted much like a Christian would act. But he never came to church or professed Christ. After I got to know him well, and we had talked about a wide range of subjects, I asked him if he had ever been to a church service. He hesitated. Then, with a twisted grimace, told me of an experience he had as a boy. He was raised in a large family. His parents survived the Depression, but they struggled to provide food and clothing for the family. When he was around 10 years old, a friend invited him to go to church with his family. He went. The Sunday school class was great. The songs were fun to sing, and, and the stories, oh, the great Bible stories, they were exciting to hear. He had never heard anyone read from the Bible before. As class ended, the teacher pulled him aside and said, Son, please don't come again dressed as you are now. We want to look our best when we come into God's house. He looked down at his old hand-me-down overalls that, yeah, were torn and tattered. He thought about that for a moment and said softly, No, ma'am, I won't ever. Then he looked at me, the author wrote, and he said, And you know what? I never did. The author reflected on that. I am sure that the Sunday school teacher meant well, and in fact was probably representing the feeling of the majority of the folks in that church. But what if what if she had put her arms around the dirty little boy in the ragged overalls and said, Son, I am thrilled you came here this morning. And I hope you will come every chance you get to hear more about Jesus because he loves you very much. Moreover, what if she had talked with her pastor or her friends in the church and mobilized a full-blown outreach effort to help this family make ends meet? What if that church would have thought, whoever, you, whoever welcomed you, welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Or whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple will receive a great reward. The story ended like this. The author says, Yes, I saw him in the church house for the first time on Wednesday. And I cried as I looked at the immaculately dressed old gentleman lying there in his casket. He was looking his best. 
but all I could think of were those words of an impressionable little ten-year-old boy echoing in my mind. No, ma'am, I won't ever. Hospitality. Welcome. Not just what we say, but how we say it. What we do. It's not about us. It's about the God whom we serve and the God whom we share. Even a cup of cold water. What a difference if that teacher would have said, Son, I am thrilled that you are here this morning. I hope you will come every chance you get to hear more about Jesus because he loves you so much. Welcome. A place where all are welcome. Amen.
confess together our faith in God through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And as we come to the time of the offering, again, we think of giving thanks. Uh, we thank God for God's continued blessing in our lives. We respond through our own financial giving. Uh, we thank everyone for the continued support as we have been online for three plus months now and finally coming back together, but to continue to support the work that we carry out. But yet knowing that giving is so much more, in fact, it is the giving of our very lives. And so we take a moment now as we think on the giving of ourselves. Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts, that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. And for the prayers of the church this morning, uh, following the words, Hear us, O God, your response, your mercy is great. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of companionship, encourage our relationships with our siblings in Christ. Bless our conversations. 
shape our shared future, and give us hearts eager to join in a festal shout of praise. Hear us, O God. God of abundance, you make your creation thrive and grow to provide all that we need. Inspire us to care for our environment and be attuned to where the earth is crying out. Hear us, O oh God. God of mercy, your grace is poured out for all. Inspire authorities, judges, and politicians to act with compassion. Teach us to overcome fear with hope, meet hate with love, and welcome one another as we would welcome you. Hear us, O oh God. God of care, accompany all who are in deepest need. Comfort those who are sick, lonely, or abandoned. We pray this morning for families grieving the loss of a loved one, especially for the family of Arlene Carlson, for comfort and strength in your promise of life eternal. We pray for Linda Braley, who recovers from surgery, and we pray for health, healing, and peace for Lorraine, Jeff, Caitlin, Dr. Bach, Dell, Bud, and for those with cancer and those undergoing cancer treatment, Darlene, Pastor Matt, Jolene Rogal, Lynn, Denny, Phyllis, Connie, Ben, and also those we now lift up in the silence of our hearts. Strengthen those who are in prison or awaiting trial. Renew the spirits of all who call upon you. Hear us, O oh God. God of community, we give thanks for this congregation. Give us passion to embrace your mission and the vision to recognize where you are leading us. Teach us how to live more faithfully with each other. Hear us, O oh God. God of love, you gather in your embrace all who have died. Keep us steadfast in our faith and renew our trust in your promise. Hear us, O oh God. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Thank you.
Christ is with you. And I am speaking to the